Welcome back to the Real Life Reviews vlog. Uh, three key areas this week. We've got uh, the news and there is some big news. We've got a little look ahead on the channel and a little bit about what we've been doing this week. Uh, pretty much normal format. However, a little apology before we start for wearing this t-shirt. It's comfortably the worst t-shirt I've ever had post-event. It's the uh, Iron Man finisher t-shirt from Maastricht. It's not technical, it's not a technical shirt, it's cotton and it's got a cheap um, screen print on it. Um, I, I don't want to offend anyone, but it's, um, it's a local picture. Um, so yeah, um, so Iron Man, get your act together please. Good t-shirts, technical, decent t-shirts. Um, right, let's get on, the news. Without doubt, the biggest news this week is the announcement of the Ironman World Championships and venues for the next four years. Uh, it's well documented what happened in Kona this year with two days of competition, uh, prices hiking up, the local community and the Mayor of Kona, Mitch Roth, has come out and said that it's not viable uh, for Kona to support or have uh, Ironman with two days of competition, yet at the same time there's quite widespread support from the Ironman community and the athlete community that having two separate days, one for the females, one for the males, uh, is good for the sport and, and just good for getting people in there. So there's a, there's a real imbalance and contrast between what's been going on. This will always be tempered by, there will be those that think that the World Championships for Ironman, Kona is Kona. It, that's what it is, it's where it was developed, it's where it started and it's where it's always been. Uh, alongside that there are those who will always say it's too expensive. If you live in other part, various parts of the world, you've got to get to Hawaii. It's not just the expense of staying there and competing and entering an Ironman event and then paying for your World Championships. It's the whole where it's located and there's got to be other locations in the world that just make accessibility and cost a little bit better. So there's always going to be two sides to this argument. At the end of the day, uh, as I've just said, the Mayor of Hawaii uh, says it's not viable. Um, the argument for the change that's come from the CEO of Ironman, uh, Andrew Messick, uh, is that, it, that by doing what Ironman are doing, it better showcases the sport uh, for both men and women. So what's happened? Well, there will still be two days. One day will be in Kona, one day will be in Nice. And this year, uh, the men will be in Nice uh, on the 10th of September, and then in October, around about the same time uh, as uh, the, the last World Championships, the women will be in Kona. That's 2023, 2024, they'll swap over. So the men will be in Kona and the women will be in Nice. And 25-26, so you can plan ahead, the same process. So 25 men in Nice, 26 female women in Nice. So why Nice? Uh, nice is often referred to as the, the European birthplace of long course uh, triathlon. The first event in Nice was in 1982. And between 1994 and 2002, the ITU held their World Long Course Championships five times in Nice. So we do know that Nice can support, hold, deliver, and it also generally has the weather. Uh, nice can deliver uh, the event. So from that perspective, it's, it's been a good choice. It's also got a pedigree with some of our more well-known um, athletes in Ironman over the past. Uh, Paula Newby Fraser uh, is a four times winner of the, gosh I've got to get this right, the Triathlon International de Nice. Um, Mark Allen is a ten times winner at Nice along with the likes of Simon Lessing, Natasha Boardman, Miranda Carfrey um, and as I say Nice has got history. It's been Ironman branded or the events have been Ironman branded there since 2005 and that's both full and middle distance events. Um, it's worth remembering, to, uh, 2019 uh, was the, the Ironman uh, 70.3 World Championships were held there, and no less than Gustavine and Daniela Reef uh, came out winners there. So 
If we're going to have it split, I guess Nice is a really, really good choice and I can see why. And it opens up, certainly for people that live in Europe, it opens up, uh, it, it's much easier to get to, albeit it's at sort of one end of the continent. But also by being in Europe, it's eminently, I think, more accessible for people in other parts of the world than perhaps Hawaii is for, for many of them. So, good move. Personally, I'm, I'm always going to have a bit in my heart that says Kona. However, I think overall it's a good move. We've got to move on. Will people start trying to aim so that their final, their World Championships is in Kona? Um, I'm not sure that the general, I don't think the pros will. Uh, they've, they've got a, a, a living to make. And in terms of uh, as amateurs, I think at the end of the day, it's about trying to target when you're best fit. Um, and quite frankly, yes, it'd be nice to be Kona. However, you know, some people go for the year they're first in an age group. Others know that they've got something going on and it's got to be the following year and, and so on. I don't think ultimately we're going to see that many people who just don't compete in one year uh, seriously just so that they can compete in another year so the finals are in Kona. But that's my opinion. Uh, let's wait and see. Also in the news, uh, Alistair Brownlee has been appointed to the board of the BOF, the British Olympic Foundation. For those that don't know, uh, the BOF is the charitable arm of the British Olympic Association. Uh, this is a great move. Al is a, a huge uh, supporter of grassroots sport all round, but obviously particularly triathlon. Um, he's already got his Brownlee Foundation, which is working along those lines. Uh, and I think he's going to be marvellous in that role. Um, it's going to be excellent. So good luck to Ali there. Um, let's move on. What have I been doing this week? Well, I guess the one thing, um, it's winter. And I've always been a, a big proponent uh, of cross-training, getting away from just the bog standard, the typical uh, training program and plan for a triathlete, and sort of cross-eventing. And I'm a big fan of mountain biking, uh, cross-country, getting out there on the lanes, in the bridleways, the forests, etc. But also, for, from a skills base, doing some enduro, um, and I've, I've been hitting a little bit of that this week. So a little bit of video just coming up when I was on the Viking Trail. That was a bit of a two-pronged one. I was doing a bit of fitness training, but I was also doing some uh, photo stuff uh, as a brand ambassador for Naked Runner Sunglasses, which I am at the moment, uh, and doing some sort of PR type photos for social media, for Instagram, Twitter, etc. So let's just move over to a little bit of video of that. So those of you that have seen a bit of the channel will know I'm a big fan of A, making training fun and interesting, and B, um, what I call cross-training, but using activities that are very related to what the triathlon is, and just getting some, again, joining that fun and different activity, um, and making it less boring. Yesterday, I, in the afternoon, I did what I call a collapse on the bike turbo session. Um, one of those that you finish, or I finish, I just can't unclip, I lean forwards onto the bars and just stay there for a minute or so as I get things back. So today's time for a little bit of fun, um, something a bit interesting. I've still obviously a um, bit damaged, so I've come out to uh, Reynoldsham Forest, to the Viking Trail, and if we look, uh, if we look into the van, we'll see uh, the two bikes that I've, I've brought, but actually I'm not going to take the yellow one, the big enduro, which I often do here because it's it's harder work, so it makes it more of a session. Uh, and there's some really nice, um, some really nice off-piste elements. Uh, but I am going to take the the Scott, uh, the Spark RC cross-country bike, have a bit of fun, and I'm going to do some stop, do some static photos, a uh, bit of social media work, um, brand ambassador kind of stuff. Uh, sunglasses for example uh, naked runner get a few pictures of the sunglasses out there see what we can find to stick on the old instagram and twitter uh, and facebook for that matter um, as well as for uh, scott um, on the bike so yeah 
Uh, there might be a little bit of video footage. I've got the chesty, uh, but it's not a video of the Viking Trail. It's just an indication of some of the training that I've been doing and am doing uh, this week. Just to add some variety uh, and a bit of fun. Well, here we are deep in the forest and I've got it to myself. I just turned the camera around a bit. Um, there's the main track and just off to the right it's one of those little off-piece bits I was mentioning earlier. They're damn good fun and it's well worth bringing something a bit meatier as a bike on here, slogging your way around and hitting some of these off-piece bits because they're great, great fun. And what I thought just on this ride is how flipping lucky I am and what I do effectively for a living. I, I coach a bit of sport, I train, I, I compete at triathlon and enduro and cross-country mountain biking i vlog i put videos up on youtube and i just basically have fun so why wouldn't we do it anyway um more to the point um i'm really really pleased i brought my naked runner sunglasses with me this isn't a video about naked runner i've got already got a couple and i'll put these ones these are the sol invictus i'll put a video about these a link to it at the end of this video however one of the great things about these and i'll just adjust the camera i'm now in the woods it was bright blue sky when i started these lenses are awesome however i now need to i'm going to change the lenses to some more light enhancing ones so let me just fiddle with the camera and set it up and I'll just show you on the seat how simple it is to change the lenses. So I'll just try and quickly show you how easy it is to change one of these lenses. So I've got my mirrored one on, I'm going to just take hold of the lens with one hand, the frame and the nose piece with the other and just open the frame up. You might have heard it click, out comes the lens, just pull it out, pick up the new one and I'm going to slot it from the outside in first. So I just find its little groove, slot it in. Once it's in, line it up on the nose piece and just squeeze lens and nose piece. And there it is, it's in. I look a bit silly with just one changed, but fantastic. I'll do the other one and I'm going to get back on with the ride because this is just awesome. And yes, I'm a brand ambassador for Naked Runner sunglasses. But for those of you that have watched the channel, I've actually worn and used these glasses for I think that my first review was six years ago um, on sunglasses that I bought myself, did the review that's now had something like 660,000 plus views. Um, so I'm a big, I am an actual genuine fan of Naked Runner. Um, this isn't because I'm getting something for it. And in fact, the reality is, I'm a brand ambassador, but at the moment I've not actually received anything from them because I'm doing this because I actually genuinely believe in them. Um, I want to leave you with just one more thought. It comes from Lionel Sanders, who, interestingly, so Lionel came second in the St. George Ironman World Championships, and in the pre-race uh, conference at Kona, he came up with this little quote, and I'm going to make sure I, I get it right, so I'm going to read it. Um, Lionel said, I guess I'm a veteran. I've walked this race many times. Well, maintaining a nice sense of humour from a, a, a quality athlete uh, who I've got enormous respect for. Um, and I just hope that we can all keep that sense of humour ourselves. Looking forward to what's coming up on the channel. Well, Saturday's review is going to be on the J Cobb Delta 38 Tri Saddle. Those of you that have watched the channel for a while or had a little scan through will know that historically I've worn the Cobb Joff 55 on my Argon 18 Tri Bike. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything and say any more, but this is the Delta 38. Very similar, I'll explain. If you've enjoyed this video and a couple of little insights then please do give it a like and share it with your friends. If you haven't yet subscribed well please click on the little picture down there below. If you have enjoyed it well in the top two corners of the last two vlogs have a look at those but also in the bottom corner down there I'm going to put the review of the Sol Invictus Naked Runner sunglasses uh, that I did a couple of years ago. Um, enjoy and thanks for watching.